Today we're going to look at a nice connection between the quaternions and a lot of like vector identities in R3. But let's just start by recalling what the quaternions are. So as a set, they're linear combinations of the number one, this vector called i, this vector called j, and this vector called k. Or maybe you could just think about those as imaginary quaternions and not vectors, but this does form a vector space. And this is a real vector space, so a, b, c, and d are real numbers. And then if you do multiplication between two things from this set, you have to keep a couple things in mind. First of all, i squared, j squared, and k squared are all negative one. So you've got three different, or actually six different, if you think about positives and negatives, roots of negative one, or square roots of negative one. Then, if you multiply i with j, you get k, whereas if you do the opposite and multiply j times i, you get negative k, so it's not commutative. Furthermore, j times k is i, whereas k times j is negative i, and k times i is j, whereas i times k is negative j. And maybe I'll just also point out that our multiplication here is associative, and you can actually check that from this given information. You don't need anything else, but I won't do that. So, like I said, we're going to compare this with operations on vectors in R3. So let's just really quickly recall the cross product here. Recall the idea of the cross product is it produces a vector that is perpendicular or orthogonal to the two vectors that you are taking the cross product of. And then we have the dot product. Okay, so let's maybe start by taking two elements of the quaternions. I'm gonna write them like this. So maybe u1 plus x1 in the i direction plus y1 in the j direction plus z1 in the k direction. And then I'm gonna multiply that with the quaternion uh, u2, and then you might guess what's going on here, plus x2i plus y2j plus z2k. And if I multiply this, I'm gonna get another linear combination of the number one i, j, and k. So really, I just need to think about the contributing factors for all of those terms. So let's look at the real term first, the one that's not attached to i, j, or k. And let's observe that we get that real term from this u1 times u2, also from this x1i times this x2j. Maybe I'll do a double underline just to show that those are matched. And then this y1j uh, times this y2j, and finally this uh, z1k and this z2k. Now, of course, when i multiplies with i, you get a negative one, so we're gonna have a little bit of a difference of a sign here. Okay, so anyway, the real part, which I'll put in these magenta parentheses, just so that we know where it came from, will be u1 times u2 minus x1 times x2, and then plus y1 times y2 plus z1 times z2. Where, observe what I did here is I just grouped all of those together so I could have minus all of them. Again, this really is attached to an i squared. This term right here, the y's are attached to a j squared. And then this next term, the z1 and the z2 are attached to a k squared, but we know that they, those all square to the number one. And then next after that, we're gonna have something attached to i. So let's see what that will be. So let's see, we can get that by doing uh, u1 times an x2i. And then we can also get that from doing a couple of other things. So an x1i with a u2, so that's another way. We could do, let's see, a y1j multiplied into a z1k, and then finally a z1k multiplied into a y2j. Now, 
after multiplying that out, we of course need to keep in mind that the sign will differ based off of, let's see, this rule right here. So if J is on the left and K is on the right, we pick up an I. If it's opposite, we pick up a negative I. So let's just quickly write out what we get from that. We'll have a U1 times an X2 and then plus, let's see, a U2 times an X1. And then after that, we'll have, and then plus a Y1 and a Z2, and then minus a Y2 and a Z1. And I'm actually gonna group these last two terms, and we'll see why that is in just a second. So let's look at those. And this Y1, Z2 minus Y2, Z1, observe, that looks like this first entry in the cross product. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. Okay, so let's get the rest of this product on the board. I'll let you guys work out all the details if you need to. Okay, so there, we've got that on the board. And now, well, let's take a closer look at this. And maybe in order to really see what's going on here, let's pretend that the so-called real part of these starting quaternions is equal to zero. And so that means all of the u's are zero. So I'll just cross out all of the u's. So that's going to be gone. This term u2 is going to be gone. That means this u1 times u2 will be gone. And then all of these first chunks of the rest of this will also be gone. Oh, and I noticed that I forgot this i, this j, and this k here. Okay, so let's get rid of all of those. And now let's observe what we have here. So we've got this x1i, this y1j, this z1k, and then similarly with the subscript twos over here. Furthermore, notice that this sum right here, that's exactly the dot product of those would-be vectors. Whereas this term, this term, and this term are the corresponding entries of our cross product of these vectors over here. So there is definitely some sort of connection going on here. Okay, so let's pick up on the next board with a reframing this multiplication in a way that will help us towards our goal, which like I said at the beginning is to come up with some vector identities. Okay, so now that we've seen a bit of a parallel between the quaternion product and the dot product and the cross product, let's make it a little bit more succinct or more efficient in terms of notation so we can find our vector identities. So let's say we've got three quaternions. We have Q1, Q2, and Q3, and we're kind of simultaneously thinking of them as vectors in R3 and quaternions. So I'll write this as A vector, B vector, and C vector, and we have A1i plus A2j plus A3k, and then similarly, for B1, B2, and B3. And I'll just put like a note here as to how this product works. And I'll just do the product with Q1 and Q2. And as we saw on the last board, the real part of this product ends up being negative the dot product between these vectors. So A dot B. And then the imaginary part ends up being, well, the cross product of these vectors. And so if it's not clear, the real part is everything that's not attached to the i, j, and k. So in other words, just the free real number. And then the imaginary part actually has three components. Okay, so that's gonna be plus, like I said, the cross product of a and b where we're kind of bending our mind to simultaneously think of these as quaternions and three vectors, like I said before. And then maybe I'll go over here and just recall the fact that the multiplication is associative like I mentioned before. So that means Q1 times Q2 times Q3 is equal to Q1, Q2, and then times Q3. And that's sort of the whole point here. Okay, so let's start with this left-hand side and see what we get. So we have Q1 times Q2 times Q3. So that ends up being, let's see, Q1 
Q1 times, now taking the quaternion product of Q2 and Q3 ends up being what? So it's gonna be negative the dot product of V and C plus the cross product of v, B and C. And then, well, really quickly, let's recall that this part right here is the real part of this product of Q1 and Q3, or Q2 and Q3, whereas this thing right here, this cross product, is the imaginary part of Q2 times Q3. So doing this product is a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna do it in stages. So let's take this Q1, keeping in mind that it is all imaginary, and we'll multiply it through to this real part. So that's gonna give us negative the dot product of B and C in the A direction. Recall that B dot C is just a number, so that just scales this vector A. And then after that, we'll have what I'll call the quaternion Q1 multiplied into B cross C. And I'm gonna write it like that with this quaternion multiplication because the quaternion multiplication works like this thing that I have written as a note up here. Okay, so now let's bring this down and we have negative the dot product of B and C in the A direction. And then Q1 multiplied into that is gonna have two components. So the first component will be this negative A dotted into B cross C. And then this next component will be related to this right here. So that'll be plus A cross the cross product of B and C. Okay, so let's note that now we've got a real part, which is only right here. So that's kind of interesting. And we have two things that are related to the imaginary part, this term right here, and then this term over here. Okay, so let's bring that final product up and then we'll do the multiplication for the other association. Okay, so this is where we ended up on the last word, decomposed back into real parts and imaginary parts. And we can see that the real parts and imaginary parts because, well, the imaginary parts are connected to vectors, whereas the real parts are connected to numbers. Here we have a dot product of A with B cross C, which gives us a number. Okay, just like I said up here, I'll use the same color coding that this term right here is the real part of the product of these two quaternions whereas this cross product of A and B is the imaginary part of the product of those two quaternions. Okay, so now let's get to the product in the other order. So we have Q1, Q2 multiplied into Q3. So that's not too hard to start because we already have the product of Q1 and Q2 up here from our exploration on the last board. So that's gonna be negative A dot B plus A cross B, and then multiply it into the quaternion Q3. And then we're gonna view that quaternion two different ways. Well, as the quaternion and also as like kind of a vector. So this A dot B is just a real number. So that means that's gonna scale the vector that Q3 is this C. So we'll have minus A dot B in the C direction. And then multiplying A cross B with Q3 uses this definition of, well, imaginary quaternion multiplication that we built earlier just with things renamed. So let's see, it'll be minus A cross B, and then that's gonna be crossed into C, and then that's gonna be dotted into C, and then we have the cross product. In this case, it'll be plus A cross B, and then cross with C. And now we have to look at what the real parts and the imaginary parts are, and I'll use the same color coding. So this down here is a real part that I have in yellow because, well, it's a dot product. Um, and that gives us, well, a real number in terms of our quaternion multiplication. And then the rest of this will be our imaginary part. So if we have this and we have this. But again, since quaternion multiplication is associative, these two are equal, and thus 
these two lines that have the yellow and blue adornments are also equal. But that means their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are also equal. So let's see. That means from this real part, we get the vector identity, which says a dot b cross c is the same thing as a cross b dot c. So that's a well-known vector identity. And then extracting the imaginary parts, we get another well-known vector identity. And I'm going to move some things around just to put it in its most classical version. And that is A cross B cross C minus A cross B crossed into C is the same thing as B dot C in the A direction and then minus A dot B in the C direction. And there you have it. We've gotten these two nice classical vector identities using quaternion multiplication. And that's a good place to stop.